Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu, Wassalamu ala Rasulillah. Assalamualaikum to our viewers at home. Okay, welcome to our special edition podcast right here at Al Qadim. Okay, uh, usually when you see me, it's going to be either with Ustaz Ali or Kiki in Unplugging Today issue, but today we are doing something a little different. Today, uh, we are focusing on the youth. As you know, in Al Qadim, we youth. To focus on the youth is one of our core values, okay? And we believe that the youth today are the leaders of tomorrow. And uh, for this session, the title will be Young Minds, Big Questions. Okay, without further ado, let me introduce you to our cast. Okay, we have quite a range here, okay? Let us start from Is. Can you please introduce yourself? Okay, my name's Is Ramli. Okay. I'm 13 years old. 13? Yes. Oh, Allahumma barik. You're very tall for a 13-year-old. I wonder what they eat these days. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, and please tell us three things that you like. Uh, I like food. food. I like sports. All right. And I like playing video games. Yeah. Great, great. That's the age that we are. Right, okay. That you are at. I, I, I used to be at that age and I believe we, we have a common ground there. <laughs> okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, moving on. Next. This is Brother Musa. Yeah. Okay, Brother Musa, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Musa Nuradi mm -hmm. and I'm nine years old. I like to, just the same as is, I like to eat food, play video games and watch TV. Watch TV, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. That's great, that's great, you see. Okay, moving on. This is Brother Mika, correct? Yeah. Okay. Please introduce yourself. Um, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Um, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Rake Mika'il. Mm -hmm. And I'm 11 years old. Okay. And I like to read, crochet, mm. and cook. Crochet. Follow my body. All right. That's 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 it. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Brother Hakim, please introduce yourself. Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Iman Hakim. Okay. I am 19 years old. 19 years old. Um, what I like? Uh, three things I like are. Drawing. Drawing. I like I like a little bit of sports too. Alhamdulillah. But one thing I most like is the team Arsenal FC. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, that's great. It's it's a uh, wonderful uh, Alhamdulillah to, to have you all here from uh, different different age groups. Okay, and all brothers. Okay, and I personally I I am thirty four. I am 34 years old. <laughs> I'm 34 years old. So uh, it is nice that, you know, uh, sometimes we rarely get to hear or talk talk about things among brothers. Yeah, sometimes we, we just, uh, as, as, as brothers, you know, we just laugh it off, you know, we have fun. But rarely we, we go down to the deeper questions. Hence, today's podcast topic, big question. Okay? Okay. So, um, going, going to the questions, this, uh, this is relating, the, the common ground, okay, that brought us all here is no doubt al Khadim and also our faith, okay? The common ground is that no matter uh, across the age, okay, the similarity that we, ha we have, apart from being uh, brothers of the same gender, okay, is that how Islam unites us all, okay? But how do we define, we, each of us would have a different understanding of the belief, right? Okay, let's start with uh, is, okay? I would like to ask you, okay? What, what does it mean to believe in Allah? What does it mean to believe in Allah? Correct. Hmm. I'm speechless. Speechless? <laughs> no worries, take your time. I mean... Uh, what makes you believe in Allah? Oh, the... The things that happened today, uh, the things that happened yesterday, all because of one God. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And uh, indeed, He's the best of planners, correct? The fact that we are sitting here today, none, you know, we can only plan as much. But uh, to be able to sit here and be in this, be in this together, it is indeed 
one of the articles of faith, which is God and God predestination, as we call it, right? Okay, and that that is that is quite deep coming from a thirteen year old, <laughs> right? It's okay, very deep. very deep. Yeah. Okay. So, why don't we ask the younger ones? Okay, Musa, what? How? What does it mean to believe in Allah? Um, I think that because I believe in Allah because of one person, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They, he is very kind and very, and very smart. I like him a lot. That's why I believe in Allah. Ah, oh, so that is. <laughs> and Musa is nine, yeah. You see the answers that we get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you, do you uh, Hakim, do you remember once you were at that age, you know, answering like that? I was just thinking of what I'm going to eat for dinner most of the time. Right, right. I'm, I'm not even digging this deep. But but Alhamdulillah. But also, um, to be able to hear it from uh, young Musa here, it it does bring us back, yeah, to the time when when we are like that and how we journey through life and how things, how we expose to different different things, right? Okay, now, brother Mika, <laughs> what does it mean to believe in Allah for you? Well, when I look like. When I look around my surroundings or my environment, like everything has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, of course, we have to praise and like obey the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rules because He created all of us and our surroundings. Allahumma barik lahu. What do you think, Brother Hakeem? It goes down to the basic. Yeah. Like, sometimes you do take things for granted, you know, everything that uh, came to be definitely has a creator okay as as uh even ustas always say yeah how can something just came to be without if there's a creation there must be a creator S and we tend to forget something that is so basic like that as we journey through life and let me hear from you brother Hakim. what does it mean to believe in allah at this age what does it mean to believe in allah for me mm, at this age this age, I mean, like, I'm not that old yet, but like, you know, for me, believing in Allah is to, is to do as what He has commanded us to do. You don't show your belief until you've done what you, until you, you're doing what He's told you to do, what your God has need. If you are commanded to not do wrong and you do wrong, it's just a, it's just a sign of that you don't believe in whatever, whatever's being told to you. Right. So for me, I feel like the best way to believe in Allah, what I feel like is how to believe in Allah is to do what we're being told, follow the, follow the Quran and the Sunnah, whatever we're being told to do, to pray, to correct. fast and everything. The five pillars, yeah. The five Inshallah, pillars. Uh, correct, correct. So, and those five pillars are the ones that we project outwards, where if people see us, they would know instantly that, okay, he or she is a Muslim. Yeah. Right. Alhamdulillah. So, as you can hear from Brother Hakim, you see, um, we as we grow older, we tend to learn more, and we will come to realize, to believing in Allah is to do what He has commanded, and leave what He has prohibited. Right. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we've got that covered. Going on to the next question, if I may. Okay. I I believe. It is one of our core beliefs to believe in angels. Okay? So I want to start with. Where did Mika this time? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. What is it like to believe in angels for you? It's like, like the angels are also like servants of Allah, right? So they, of Correct. course, obey Allah as well. Correct. So we have to be like those angels? No. In terms of uh, obeying the commands of Allah? Yes, yes, you're right, you're right. <laughs> MashaAllah. Great, great. Allahumma barik lahu. May I ask you now, Brother Musa? Okay. What do you know about angels? Um, I know that um, Angel Jibril alayhi salam mm -hmm. He asked Nabi Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
read this book and the Prophet Sallam said I don't know how to but he just keep saying that three times and he hugged him so Prophet Muhammad Sallam started to read it and it all started to make sense so that's why I believe in angels Ah, Allahumma barik lahu there's evidence that uh, Angel Jibril came down to our Prophet and told him What's the Arabic word to read? Ikra. Correct. You see? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Is now. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. What is it? What what is it like? What are angels to you? Uh, angels are a yeah. interesting type of what, creatures. Creature. Creation of Allah. Definitely. Creation of Allah. Definitely. Uh, I'm really interested in angels. There's two right beside me right now. Uh, as we Allah. speak, we're Allah. hearing yeah, like there's so many angels that I'm interested in, like Jibril, the angels that will blow the seven trumpets. Oh, no. What was the angel that had big wings? Sir? If I'm not mistaken, the the one that I know was Jibril. Yeah. <laughs> the, right. Alhamdulillah. Okay. You, you can see from, from like, you know, different, different age groups, the answers are really fascinating as, as they, yeah, right, as, as, as we all grow. How about you, Hakim? At your age now, at 19, what is it? Like, what are angels to you? To me, angels are like these beings that are perfect, and I wouldn't say they're perfect because I think it's said in the Quran that that we're the perfect, um, we're the perfect creation of Allah. We're the best of creations. We're the best of creations, no. yeah. But um, I would see them as like how they, as uh, whether whether we can say. Um, like how they obey Allah is an example for us to follow. But at the same time, I'd like to point out that we're, we're humans and we can't follow as to that extent. We can't, we can't, we can never fulfill um, to that extent. We can, we will always, you know, make mistakes and stuff. So when I see the, when, when I read stories of these angels, all I feel is that they're very different beings from us. We can try and take an example of them, but and then they were all still humans, we're all still trying. I felt the best we can do to emulate all these uh, any, like traits from these angels is to try our best to be to be in that way, inshallah, to follow the to follow the uh, commands of Allah, you know, the, to the best of our ability. Inshallah, inshallah, Allahumma barik lahu. Correct. And may I add, and the no doubt we are definitely gonna have some mistakes here and there. But what uh, puts us uh, in favor, okay, in, 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 um, in the sight of Allah, it's our repentance towards Him that would raise our ranks, you see. So, uh, the key point for us uh, as uh, humans, okay, has always been repentance and going back to Allah, you see. For the angels, they, a key point is that they have been they've been created from light, you see. And they were way before there, before we as humans, you know, the first human, uh, Prophet Adam salam, was created. So they know, they know um, there, is, there is Jannah and they, they know there's hellfire, you see. If, if we were to see it with our own eyes, we would be as, exactly, exactly, we would be terrified and we, we would know that all of this is real. You see, and it comes down to the test of faith, our faith. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, moving on. Let me start with Brother Musa first. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, I would like to know, do you think Allah, as mentioned in the old books, okay, the previous scriptures, such as the Torah and uh, the Injil, are they mentioning to the same God? I don't know, maybe because it Allah Allah put the Bible, the Torah and the Quran. Um it was it Allah Allah the one who created it, so so maybe but the thing that I know about the other religions book is that they changed it to become like like, it has been tainted. It has yes. been changed. You see, so many things have been removed and has been added. Correct? Yes. Allahumma barik lahu. Allahumma barik lahu. I see. I see. 
But you do believe that they are all mentioning towards the same God, which is Allah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, how about you, Ramika? Do you think what they mention in the Injil, in the Torah, and the Quran are referring to the same God? Um, in my opinion, yes, because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the one that sent down all those three books, and yeah, it's the same God because Allah is the one that sent down those three books. Great, Allahu Akbarillahu, Allahu Akbarillahu. How about you, Is? What do you think makes the previous scriptures and what was revealed to us, to Prophet Muhammad, the Quran, different? What was different? No. The way, the way they asked to pray, the way it was sent down. Who was it sent? Who received it? It was all different. And they tend to take what we see, what we know to be as a prophet, and to claim him. To claim and for others to claim his divinity, which is not right, correct? As we only know, there's only one God. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Hakim, what about you? What What do you think? You know about the previous scriptures that has been revealed, okay, throughout the ages, and what we have now. Do you think they they are referring to the same God? Well, in my scripture, which is the Quran, no. uh, it's mentioned that. All these scriptures originally were mentioning to the same God. We're mentioning to Allah. We're mentioning to our mentioning to Tawheed, to believe in only one God. So, I believe that even though with how messed up with how messed up the scriptures may be now, that originally all these other scriptures, you know, the Suhuf, the the Injil, the Torah, they're all referring to Allah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, and correct. The only thing that makes it different is that we believe that the Quran, for example, if you were to have a phone, you would want to download the latest iOS, right? The latest operating system, okay? And that's the final operating system that's been reviewed, okay? You don't want to use some outdated operating system and anything else that could be bugged, okay? That could be hacked, added, removed. Does it make sense? Yes. No? <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So yeah. So from the suhuf, the Torah and the Injil, okay, we believe they are revealed by Allah, and they are. They mention, okay, they are referring to the same God, which is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, but due to the changes of the previous scriptures, okay, that has been altered and amended, okay. Therefore, we cannot put our faith in those scriptures anymore, except to what was perfectly preserved, which is our final, latest and final scripture, which is the Quran. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, moving on. Is I want to know. You know, when we are young, we like to listen to stories of the prophet. Okay. I want to know, as you grow older now, is the prophet that you liked the most when you were younger, and where you are now, is it still the same prophet? Which prophet do you like the most, if I may ask? I think I like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most. But when I was younger, I I wasn't even into this prophet whole story stuff, so I can't okay. say. If it's different or I've changed. Okay. Yeah. So I think. Yeah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the only story I watch, listen to. Yeah. Other than that, that, I don't really listen to anything else. It is the best example. He was sent as the seal of the prophets, and his ways are the ones we should follow. Allahumma barik. Correct. How about you? Oh, Musa. Musa is the name of a prophet. I. Should I should I ask you what's your favorite prophet? <laughs> okay, Musa. May I know what's your favorite prophet? Um, Prophet Musa alayhi <laughs> salam. Alhamdulillah. Okay, why so? If I may. Because he is strong. Mm. He can, he can put the sea in two. I want, I want, I just want to be like him, and yeah. I, I want to be strong and kind, smart like him. Insha Allah, and. 
you know, may Allah make you that way, inshallah. Uh, how about you, Mika? Um, Who Prophet, is your favorite Prophet? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi wa sallam. Um, because he was a great role model. He was very patient, sober. Yeah. And remember when he wanted to teach people at Ta'if mm-hmm. and they threw stones at him? Mm-hmm. And the and the Malaikat went to him and said, do you want us to stone them back? And mm. um, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, it's fine. So like, you can see how patient he is. And I really want to be like him. Allahumma <laughs> barik. Uh, it's it's really um, rejuvenating to be able to hear it from from someone that is s- decades younger than than I am. You see, and Alhamdulillah, thank you, thank you for rejuvenating our hearts. Okay, and true, um, I agree with you. Our prophet can be the firmest of people when it comes to things that you should or shouldn't do but also the way of his delivery on how he talks to people. He, he has the softest and the kindest of character. Allah Mubarak. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, may we all emulate that. Inshallah. Nah. Hakim, 19 years old. I'm sure s- somewhere deep down, in t- I don't know if anyone has asked you this. Mm-hmm. Let me be the first. Inshallah, if no one, okay? Who's your favorite prophet? You know, at Musa's age, yeah. I also had an affinity, affinity. Like I also was a you bit interested relate. to Musa. Uh, I've always, I've always looked up to him because he was, or oh, he had this cold energy around him. You know, right. he was, he was like the tough guy of the Ruthless, of the place, yeah. right? Prof- yeah. So cool. at that age, yeah, I always thought that Musa was the coolest. Then you grow older a bit, and then you know, I get um, Mika's Mika's you know point two where. Uh, it's not also all about the strength in me. It's all. It's also about you being the gentlest person, the kindest person. And I feel like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best example of that. It's not to say that he's not. He's not strong. He's not. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he was. He's been to battles. Yeah, he's. He's definitely has like his own his own ability, charisma. Yeah. his own charisma, his own strength in it. Yeah, yeah. But even with that, he was the most kindest, most gentlest. To have that kind of um, patience when you know you know like everything is on your side, right. because Allah is Allah was on His side too, right. and to know that everything is on your side and still to be that merciful towards people, I feel like that's the best example you can ever follow. Oh, inshallah, subhanallah. Did you hear that? It? Yeah, subhanallah, brother Hakim. Yeah, hopefully maybe you know you all may grow up to become like brother Hakim as well. <laughs> inshallah, yeah. inshallah, even better, even better. Yeah. Right, even better, inshallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, but we all know all these prophets that have been sent by Allah carries one thing, okay, which is tawhid. Tawhid meaning monotheism, okay, and to submit ourselves to Allah alone, okay. But um, apart from that, they also came apart to, to preach. Something that will definitely happen. Okay? Do you know what it is, Brother Hakim? Qana and Qadar, I'm assuming. That is. That is oh, after. Oh, that is after. I know. It's. it's uh... Hold on, hold on. Okay. I think you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask. Brother Mika, do you know what do all prophets preach besides Tawheed? To be just like them. Correct, also? Of course, we want to be like them, correct? Okay. So Musa, do you know what do they what do they constantly preach besides Tawheed? I think mm-hmm. that they are very like so cool. Cool, definitely they are. Until now, until this age, I still think they are the best role models. Very cool. But Hakim and I both, I, 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 agree. I think all of us around in this room think that they are very cool. Alhamdulillah. Is, what do you think? What message do the prophets bring to us? What message do they bring to us? Mm-hmm. I think the most important message that the prophets wanted to send to us was to pray to one God. Correct. Tawhid. 
Correct. And to fear Allah. Correct? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And another thing, if I may add, okay, let me uh, add on to that. All the prophets, you know, apart from Tawheed, they come, they will always remind you of the day of judgment. Correct, Rulang Kim? Was that your answer? Yes, and you're okay. Okay, correct. There is inevitable. It will come for every one of us where we will be accountable for what we have done. Right? Okay. But, Alhamdulillah, if we are practicing, there's nothing for us to worry about. Inshallah. And may Allah keep us on the straight path, yeah. <laughs> alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Finally, like uh, Brother East mentioned, okay, what makes you, what makes you think we are able to be here all together? Uh, because of one, only one, okay. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Correct. And in other words, what is that? What is what that? is what, what is his plan? What is his plan? Yeah. I genuinely don't. Know. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Maybe Brother Musa would know. Brother Musa, do you know? Why we are all here? What is, what is a word that we can sum up, okay, to say, Allah's plan. I think because we are all here to make other people believe that Allah is God too. Inshallah, Inshallah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, how about you, Ramika? What 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 is the word that we can use to say that this is Allah's plan? I'm not sure. You're not sure? It's okay. It's okay. Maybe Brother Hakim could help. No, that is uh, Qadar Allah. Alhamdulillah. We're all here by Allah's plan. Allah has predestined Correct. all of us to be here. Correct. Inshallah. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you Alhamdulillah. for being an example for the children. So, uh, did you hear Brother Hakim's answer? Okay, what was it? Al Qadar Allah. Qadar Allah. It is Qadar and Qadar. Okay? It's predestination that we are all able to be here at this place, at this time. Okay. Indeed, Allah has willed and He has planned everything. Okay. And that brings us to our, our main pillars of faith. You see. So, as I've mentioned, the five pillars that people see or we show, that, that makes others look at us and can tell that, okay, you're a Muslim. He or she is a Muslim. But what we went through just now is what we should have within ourselves. Okay? And so, if we can recap what we've covered first, the first question was regarding... What, what does it mean to believe in Allah? What does it mean to believe in Allah? Okay? And secondly, what was the second question? Is the same, is the same Allah... The same in other books of other religions. I believe that's the third one. Quite correct. Correct. Is would you like to try the second question? What was the oh, question, second no. question? <laughs> uh, the second question. I'm the ones where you ask a lot of wings. The biggest oh, one. angel. Yeah, about angels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Okay. Third question. Thank you for answering, Musa. Other scriptures. Okay. Fourth question. What's your favorite prophet? Correct. Thank you, Veronica. <laughs> Thank you. Hakim, what's the fifth one? The fifth one. That was... What do Qiyam. all prophets bring? Uh, Correct. Yes. Uh, the Day of Judgment. The Day of Judgment. And finally, why we are here? It's because of Qadar and Qadar. Okay. So, if you could sum, sum that up. What are all these six? The... Uh, the... Uh, thank you, <laughs> Six yes? pillars of faith. Six pillars of faith. Musa. Six pillars of faith. Hakim. Six articles of faith. Alhamdulillah. 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 We got that covered. Okay. May I just to make it sum it, sum it very quickly for y'all, so that something that y'all can, the viewers can benefit as well. Inshallah. Okay. How it goes is like, we believe in Allah. Okay. Allah created angels. What do angels bring? Angels bring down books. Who do they bring down to? They bring down to the prophets. So what do the prophets do with the books? Or what do the prophets convey? They convey about the day of judgment. Okay. And what is all this 
what is all this plan? It is the Kodok and Kodok of Wow. Right? Okay? That is a very nice thing to <laughs> like. <laughs> right. Yeah. How do you I actually learned it from who? You know, I learned it from Sister Anis. Wow. Sister Anis. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah, so cool. alhamdulillah. So, viewers at home, don't forget to catch us, okay, on our school holiday program. Um, taking place this 27 and 28 May, Monday, Tuesday, from 9 till 5.30, okay, where we have um, jam-packed activities, okay, for the kids. Uh, food and snack will be provided, okay, it is the first of its kind at Al Khadim, and we'll be having it in the main hall. It's going to be lots of fun, inshallah. So, um, we hope to see you there, okay. And as uh, usual, social media, okay, someone has to say, who wants to say share, who wants to say like, who wants to say subscribe, who wants to say comment, what do you want to, you? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Share. Share. Is. Uh. <laughs> Thumbs up, correct? Thumbs up. Leave okay. a comment below. Leave a comment below, <laughs> correct. And follow Al Khadim TV, inshallah. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah.